In this video I want to share with you my way of automating setting up of developer machine. And actually every single time when you change your job and you are coming to a new company you normally are getting your working machine. And normally it is completely empty. So you need to install all programs that you need for work, also all your scripts, maybe copy all your configs, also you need all your notes, files and much more. This is why it is really common that a person who is coming to a company is normally setting up the first one or two days their own machine. And after you changed companies at least several times, or maybe you just bought a new MacBook and you need to set up everything again, you thought, okay, maybe I can automate this process of setting up a new machine. And actually the most popular and easy solution how you can set up a new machine is by using dot .files. So what are dot .files as you can see here in documentation. This is the user specific configuration for all applications which were typically stored in something which is called dot .files. Because actually almost all configurational files are started with dot, which are hidden files on your machine. This is why we have this name dot .files. So actually the idea is that we have a bunch of configuration files and we just push them to some git repository and then on our new machine we simply clone this repository and we copy them to our own machine. And obviously copying files by hands is not that fun, this is why we can simply create a bash script that will do everything for us. Why bash scripts? Because actually they are there by default in every operational system and we don't need to install anything additionally. And as you can see here is my repository with dot .files. And the idea is that on every new machine I simply call this bash script set up a new machine and I'm good to go. I don't need to do anything else at all. All my programs will be installed on this machine, all my configurations will be copied in correct places and everything else that I need will also be there by default. This is why all my machines are typically stateless, which means I don't store any files on this machine, because either I store everything in remote repositories or on external drives. So now let's check what I have here. As you can see the first script will be set up in new machine sh, and this is what I'm calling. So actually as you can see here in readme, this is just an executable script and I don't need to do anything else. As you can see here I am writing source and then the path and this line will include here this script main sh and so on. Which actually means I am splitting everything that I want to do from one file to different files. In this case it is much easier to support. But of course if you are just starting it makes sense to pack everything in a single file and then split it later. So first of all here I have two helpers and I will talk about them in a second. After this I just have different tasks. So I have for example homebrew to install all packages, then commands to configure shell, to make symlinks, configure vim and so on and so on. Which actually means if you are doing it by yourself you can simply split it in different shell files and then just source them here in the main file. So let's check what we have for example here in tasks homebrew main sh. So as you can see here I have a folder tasks and these are all tasks that I am running. Let's jump here inside homebrew and I have here a bunch of scripts. And actually this means that in every single folder I have a main sh and then some additional scripts that I probably need inside this main sh. And here is our main sh. As you can see we have exactly the same idea. We are sourcing these different scripts so our main shell script is not that big. And as you can see here we have for example installing homebrew. So let's check what this command is doing. Let's jump inside installing homebrew and as you can see here I have a shell script to install brew package manager on my machine. So this line checks if I already have brew on my machine, if not I am installing it from homebrew. The next script that I am using here is installing packages. And as you can see here I simply have an additional helper brew install and then I am passing inside the package that I want to install. And actually these are all applications that I am using and I am installing really everything with brew. But it doesn't mean that you should do the same if you are for example using windows machine then you can use some other package manager and not brew. Also the interesting part here is that I am using helper brew install. So what is this? Let's check helpers. So as you can see here near tasks I have helpers. And actually I have two things. First of all installers and this is exactly what I am using for example for brew install. As you can see here we are running brew, checking if we have this package or not and then we are just coming out without failing. 
So with installation is clear, the other thing that I have is Echo's SH. And as you can see here, I have some functions to color my Echo output. For example, here I have a function bot, OK, running and so on. And as you can see, for example, on the left, in my main file, I have bot and then the message setting up dot files. And as you can see on the right, it will simply echo the provided command. And for example, when we're using OK command, here it will be colored with green. So I think you got the idea, this is just a bunch of shell scripts and nothing more. And you can pack there inside whatever you want. And one more thing that I want to show you is my symlinks task. As you can see here inside tasks, I have a symlinks. And actually this is the most important task, because it copies all my configuration for all applications in the new machine. As you can see here we have first of all main sh, and then for each file that we have in this directory symlinks, we are doing a symlink to the correct place. In this case it is a root of home directory. And here on the bottom I am doing the same for dot config folder. And here inside files I am storing a bunch of configuration for all programs that I am using. But it is not all. After you have your new machine, normally you want to change a lot of settings. You need to jump to settings, then go in every single setting, like change menu bar, all settings and so on, and you will for sure forget some settings. This is why here inside tasks, I have a task which is called OS X, and inside main SH. And as you can see here, I have a lot of configuration. So actually this running is just a message what will happen, and then this command is just a normal terminal command for OS X to change some settings. And as you can see, I am changing lots of settings here, just so that I don't need to adjust them by myself inside settings. And now it's time to check how my command to set up a new machine is working. So actually we simply clone this repository on the new machine and then we're writing dot slash set up a new machine dot sh. Then we're hitting enter and we have time to drink a cup of coffee. And then after 15 minutes or so you can go back and as you can see, everything was installed successfully. Also, if you are interested what editor I'm using and how I configured it, don't forget to check this video also.